Welcome to Cigar Creed. I'm your host JJ and uh, today we're going to do a review on the uh, Dominion Black Lotus. This is a company that I am familiar with or heard of. Um, the cigar itself I am aware of, absolutely. Uh, it has only been around since uh, 2014. So I believe the process all got started, I think something like in 2009, 10, somewhere around there. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a beautiful looking cigar, smooth wrapper, dark natural wrapper. It is not a Maduro, it's a dark natural wrapper. It's a Colorado uh, Habano. And um, the company is actually uh, Canadian. So I know it's funny, I'm Canadian from Canada and here in Canada, but um, yeah, I haven't had, I haven't had one yet. So this is gonna be a good review for myself and everybody. This will be a true 100% uh, first time. So um, nice looking band. <clears throat> and uh, Great, great sweet barnyard or barnyard kind of uh, espresso aroma, really. You know, it's got a bit of cocoa, a bit of espresso, barnyard for sure. Very nice. I like it. So, anyway, that being said, let's uh, cut it, toast it, and get to know it. So the, trim that up there, the company, like I said, is Canadian, or was established in Canada, and the, uh, the gentleman who started it, Mr. Steve Ricker, <coughs> is uh, founder and owner, and he has worked so hard for this cigar. There's not much history on it, obviously, because it's a fairly new cigar, new company. But um, this this was a lot of time and a lot of uh, push and shove for him to to break through the market with this cigar because of the laws and the taxes and everything else in Canada are, are a lot different, maybe more strict. I'm not 100% sure, you know, the laws around the world, but um, I know for a fact that tobacco taxes are crazy, import, all that stuff. So, for a Canadian to make a cigar and a company and a brand and you know, uh, distributed across Canada. That's a huge, huge feat right there. That uh, that was something that needed to be done. Thank you very much, Steve. But um, yeah, it, it, I can't tell you how big it is. And it took a year and a half, maybe almost two years, for this thing to finally reach the market where it, where it was supposed to be, and which is in my hands and yours. So. <clears throat> um, Again, you know, I couldn't imagine what Steve had to go through to, you know, the headaches, sleepless nights, everything to finally get his product out there. My, I, I know myself, I've had a few of those, but not for a year and a half. Smooth. Creamy smoke. Fairly light on the palate, actually, so far. We just let it, we'll let her mellow for a bit. Um, nice on the retro hail, actually. Went through, touch of pepper on the retro, but not nothing crazy. Um, <clears throat> very nice. I like the construction. It's got some good, it's pretty firm, it's pretty packed.
it's about a, the cigar itself is about a medium to you know medium full. Uh, this one here that we're smoking is a Toro. Uh, it's a six by fifty. <clears throat> um, it's uh, produced in Honduran uh, or in, in Honduras uh, with Honduran tobaccos, uh, Nicaraguan tobaccos, and uh, like I said, the exterior um, Colorado Habano uh, wrapper. The uh, it, it, where it's pro, uh, produced. And I'm not going to butcher this, but I'm going to try it anyway. Which is the Tobaccos de Oriente. I think I got it right. Anyway, it's in, in Honduras. And uh, it, the cigar itself launched in uh, October of 2014. Um, <clears throat> so... When it did uh, make its debut here in Canada, anyway, it quickly became um, a favorite amongst Canadians um, and tobacconists as well. The uh, uh, where I got this from was actually from a tobacconist, and it was recommended. And actually, they were doing a display because I believe it was Steve that was actually going on tour around. Um, <clears throat> It was either him or his representative. Don't hold that against me. Anyway. So in 2015, um, in 2015 it became one of, sorry, <laughs> something on the camera. It came, became one of the top sellers. Um, one of the top selling cigars uh, in the country, in Canada. So for such a short time, for it to be on the market, becoming a top seller, that's pretty impressive as well. Now in 2016, last year, made its debut uh, at the uh, IPCP, uh, our uh, show. Um, anyway, so... Uh, the International Premium t uh, Cigar Pipe Retailer um, puts that on every year. Basically, it's their trade shows. So when it made its debut there, after it had been in Canada on the market for a couple of years, at the IPCPR uh, trade show, it basically gave its rundown on its uh, on its plan to be released to the US market so basically since 2016 uh, maybe 20 uh, maybe late 2015 you know Americans have had an opportunity to uh, to check it out um, you know it's something we need so I'll be supporting them um, <clears throat> But yeah, good to know that uh, it's, it's making its way. Steve uh, Ricker has been working with and at uh, Ernesto Carrillo's, uh, Carrillo's uh, factory and with him. So um, basically, he's, Steve's been doing all his R&D and everything for, with new product with Ernesto. Uh, Ernesto and uh, <clears throat> they have developed quite a few cigars from there uh, one of them was for Canada's 150th uh, birthday so they came out with the uh, the Confederate cigar which I believe is only available in Canada so far or will be um, kind of a specialty but it is in honor of Canada's 150th birthday slow burning it's nice I'm getting like, like some molasses coming through bit of earth just a hint of, of unsweetened cocoa 
Bit of that barnyard. It's good. It's smooth. It's really smooth and creamy. I'm actually very surprised. So, uh, this particular blend comes in three different sizes. It has the Robusto, and uh, <clears throat> that one is a 5 by 52. This one here is the Toro, okay, which is the 6 by 50. And they also have the Gordo, 6 by 60. Uh, it does come in a Maduro, and the Maduro is only in one size, uh, which is a Toro as well. But it is a six by uh, six by fifty-two. So I wouldn't mind trying the Maduro. This natural so far is, like I said, it's dark. It's crazy how dark it is. Actually, it's pretty good. It's actually got some weight to it too. I'm actually pretty surprised. Decent smoke output. Great off the foot, great off the draw. Feels good in the hand, you know? It's nice. <clears throat> nice. So anyway, uh, like I said, it's, it's slow burning. Not much history to the cigar. And uh, so what I've been up to lately, this whole month of, well, November's done now and we're December 1st, so we're expecting the big man in red. Um, so count your days down. But it's just been one hell of a month for me in November. Uh, I had birthdays, had uh, new treatment done um, for my eyes. So I've been doing this photo light therapy that's happening. Um, and that's taking up so much time. It's wearing me out. Um, you know, I feel, feel dizzy, not dizzy so much, but I get tired. It, it's really exhausting. Um, you know, it's, it's a little bit more than just staring into a light, but it, uh, it's supposed to work with cellular rejuvenation and uh, uh, promote good uh, uh, muscle stimulation and blood increased blood flow to the brain and all that stuff. So uh, I've been doing that all month, and that's four days a week at the specialist. And then I got there's a. Um, uh, thing I do at home as well so on the days that I can't make it in I do that at home and then I go like I said I go in four days a week for that but anyway one of the things that had occurred uh, through the month of November is my wife and I celebrated our 10th anniversary so yeah we made it a decade and uh, you know two kids um, unfortunately because of my accident this year we couldn't really go away we, I wanted to take her away to New York City I'd never been she had been once when she was younger but uh, I really wanted to make that a trip to remember but because of what we all have gone through this year fortunately just wasn't in the budget to do so but it'll happen it'll come so we just went to, uh, we took a trip down to Niagara Falls. If you haven't been, it's Canada's Vegas, so to speak. Um, you know, we went to the falls and that, and uh, there was a few cigar shops there that I knew of, a couple of them, not the best. I wouldn't really step foot in them on the, on the couple of the B&Ms there. There is one that's in the actual casino there, uh, tobacconist in there. 
they downsized. They moved from one shop to another, so they downsized a bit. Their inventory isn't as great as it used to be. But I did find this one, which is where I got this guy. Um, place is called Cigar Experience. It's a little bit out of the beaten path, but uh, you know it's just on the outskirts. Well worth it. Um, gentleman who owns it, his name is Evan, Doctor Evan. Uh, had a great time chatting with him. Thanks very much. And uh, he's at forty-five thirty-six. Uh, Queen Street uh, in downtown Niagara Falls. Um, great guy. Well, his, his great knowledge. The man is is friendly, greets you at the door, doesn't look over your shoulder, you know, asks you a few questions, of course, like any good tobacconist should, but uh, we had a great time, had a great chat. I couldn't stay too long. My wife didn't want to come in, so she was waiting in the car, so... I didn't want to keep her waiting. Happy wife, happy life. I love how slow this thing's burning. Man. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so I, I you know, um, I got a few singles from him and we chatted a bit. He was very kind, uh, you know, uh, he put everything in a Boveda uh, uh, zip seal bag with a Boveda pack to make sure that I got it home okay and it wouldn't dry out. Um, funny enough, he even guarantees. So even if I come home, spark this guy up, it you know it's plugged for some reason or burn was absolute garbage. He said, save the wrapper. He goes, bring it back in. He goes, I'll replace it. I don't know anybody that would do that, especially being off premises. That's a, that's the type of guy he is. That's the type of store he runs. You know, the fact that he would guarantee that, that's that says a lot. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, um, you know, he gave me a little gift. I appreciate that too. A little bag, a nice uh, big bag of coffee beans, uh, which I have tried. It's pretty good. Um, but yeah, if you have a chance, if you're in the area, if you happen to make it to Southern Ontario and the, go to the visit the falls, go to Cigar Experience, see Evan, great guy. He's got a nice shop. Shop's about three years old. Um, I wish I had time to film it if he would let me, um, but... Yeah, I, I definitely go back in a heartbeat. Um, and I know, you know, um, if I ever had any questions too. Oh, and he matches prices. He will definitely match prices and will not be beaten. Um, but I know if I have a question too, um, there, I have no doubt that he would answer it uh, with, with the highest information available. <clears throat> um, there was one other thing I wanted to say too. Um, but yeah, I, I check him out. Nice, clean, classy place. Fortunately, can't smoke inside Canadian laws, or at least Ontario anyway. Good flake. Burning like a champ. All the way around. Almost razor sharp burn. Um, not really any change-ups. It seemed to get smoother and creamier. Still the same on the retrohale. Smooth through the nose, touch of pepper on there. Not a palate buster at all. Very, very light. Um, it, it just, it washes away. It's good flavor though. That cocoa coffee molasses is still in there. Um, earth has kind of subsided. That, that hay, that barnyard, 
is gone. Um, <clears throat> it's been great. So, I don't know what else to say to it. You know, it's it's been in, it's been a really good cigar so far. Hmm. Going back to the uh, cigar experience, the B and M that I went to. One one of the other things I wanted to add too is that before I even went there, I checked them out researched them a bit, and went through the reviews. 90-something reviews or something like that. And I read every single one of them. I think there's maybe one bad one, if that, and it was only like a two and a half, three star. But it was just, it was stupid. But every one of them was up there. Four and a half, five star, and every single one of them had something good to say. Not to mention, I would say about 95% of the reviews, Evan himself answered and thanked every single one of those people. That's a nice guy. That's somebody who cares for his customer, somebody who cares about his name and his, his shop. So I just wanted to throw that out there. You know, my wife and I, we had a uh, great experience in the falls. And if you haven't been, my God, one of the wonders of the world. It's really something to stand there and be right there by it. You feel the thumping, the bass from the water falling and just crashing into the... Oh, man. It's quite an experience, uh, especially for the first time. Somebody's seen it for the first time. We've been many times, but, you know, it, it's still a wow every time. So if you've never got a chance to see the falls... I suggest it. So, still pretty light. Coming into the second. And I can feel a bit of the strength picking up already. It's not too bad. Not heady. Feeling good. Feeling confident. It's nice. Anyway, I'll be back for the end of the second. Okay, so we're back. Uh, almost at the end of the second year. It's been really good. Had to... Got a little bit of a scary wonky burn on it for a while there. I didn't touch it up. I wanted to. And I was going to, just as I did, was, or just as I was about to. All of a sudden you see the red cherry line up here. Started to burn fine. I figure, okay, I'll just leave it. Working itself out, no problem. It seemed to be tight at one, one point. Just had to, you know, kind of squish the end here, right at the head. Seems to be fine after that. Getting a bit of pepper now. Had some raisin and oats come through some molasses again bit of barnyard happened uh, as well i think possibly some of that too had to deal with some of it burning and some of it not but it started to smooth out after that once the burn started to catch up kind of got started to get more of those sweet notes coming through a bit of a raisin as well or a raisin in there for sure a bit of nut it's been good Good smoke output still. A little bit lighter than most, but... No different on the retro. Still good, still creamy. Like I said, bit of that pepper on the retro, you know, but nothing, nothing harsh. Nothing too, you know, nothing that's gonna burn but it's good, it's nice, it's smooth. Anyway, gonna carry on. I'll be back for the third and final thoughts and uh, talk to you soon. Okay, so we're back for the third and final. Um, strength picked up more, 
got a little bit of spice on the palette now. Earth tones amped up. I got some grass. A uh, bit of that barnyard we were talking about. Um, about how, uh, in the beginning of the third, I got a, got a bit more coffee, espresso notes there too. So <clears throat> basically in conclusion, nice cigar. Great cigar. Definitely recommend it. Definitely hand one out. Would I buy a box? Yes. Definitely recommend it. Um, you know, it had a bit of a wonky burn, left it, straightened itself out. Again, even though some of the notes picked up a little bit more, it's still pretty light on the palate for, for what it is. Um, not much more to say about it. It's been a good cigar. Uh, again, that's the Dominion Black Lotus. Uh, got it from Cigar Experience, thank you very much. And uh, that's pretty much it. Cigar Creed, JJ. Tune in again for another review. See you soon.